let's go into deep seek again. So we're we're in the post deep seek R1 time, I think. And what we're there's two sides to this market watching how hard it is to serve it. On one side, we're going to talk about deep seek themselves. They now have a chat app that got to number one on the app store. Disclaimer, number one on the app store is measured by velocity. So it's not necessarily saying that more people have the DeepSeek app than mm-hmm. the ChatGPT app. Yep. But it is still remarkable. Claude has never hit the number one in the app store, even though everyone in San Francisco is like, oh my God, you got to use Claude, don't use ChatGPT. So DeepSeek hit this. They also launched an API product recently where you can ping their API and get these super long responses for R1 out. In At the same time as these are out, we'll get to what's happened to them. Uh, because the model weights for DeepSeek R1 are openly available and the license is very friendly, the MIT license is commercially available, all of these mid-sized companies and big companies are trying to be first to serve R1 to their users. Uh, we were trying to evaluate R1 because we have really similar research going on. We released the model and we're trying to compare to it. And out of all the companies that are quote unquote serving R1 and they're doing it at prices that are way higher than the DeepSeek API. Most of them barely work and the throughput is really low. To give to give context, right? Everyone, one of the parts of like freaking this out was like China reached capabilities. The other aspect is they did it so cheap, right? And the so cheap, we kind of talked about on the training side why it was so cheap. Yeah, let's slash... talk about why it's so cheap on the inference. It works well and it's cheap. Why yeah. is R1 so damn cheap? So I think there's a couple factors here, right? One is that they do have model architecture innovations, right? This MLA, this new attention that they've done is set, is different than the uh, attention from attention is all you need, the transformer attention, right? Now, others have already innovated. There's a lot of work like MQA, GQA, um, local global, all these different innovations that like try to bend the curve, right? It's still quadratic, but the constant is now smaller, right? Related to our previous discussion, this multi-head latent attention can save about 80 to 90 percent in memory from the attention mechanism, which helps especially at long context. It's, it's 80 to 90 percent versus the original, but then versus what people are actually doing. Mm-hmm. It's still an innovation. This 80 to 90 percent doesn't say that the whole model is 80 to 90 percent cheaper, just as one part of it. Well, and not just that, right? Like other people have implemented techniques like local, yeah. global, yeah, yeah, and yeah, sliding yeah. window and GQMQ. That, but anyways, like DeepSeek has their attention mechanism is a true architectural innovation. They did tons of experimentation. And this dramatically reduces the memory pressure um, it's still there, right? It's still a quadrat. It's still attention. It's still quadratic. It's just dramatically reduced it relative to prior forms. Yeah, right. That's the memory pressure. I should say, in case people don't know, R1 is 27 times cheaper than O1. <laughs> we yes. think that OpenAI had a large margin built in. Okay, so Among, that's one. There, there's multiple factors. We should break down the factors. I think it's two bucks per million token output for R1 and sixty dollars. Uh, per million token output for O1. Yeah, let's look at this. So, so I think this is is very important, right? OpenAI is you know that drastic gap between DeepSeek and pricing, but DeepSeek is offering the same model because they open weighted it to everyone else for a very similar, like much lower price than what others are able to serve it for, right? Um, so there's there's two factors here, right? Their model is cheaper, right? Um, it is 27 times cheaper. Well, I don't remember the number exactly off the top of my head. So we're looking at a graphic that's showing different places serving V3, DeepSeek yep. V3, which is similar to DeepSeek R1. And there's a vast difference in, uh, in, in serving the, cost. Right? In serving cost. And what explains that difference? And, and, and so like part of it is OpenAI has a fantastic margin, right? They're serving, when they're doing inference, their gross margins are north of 75%, right? So that's, that's a four to five X factor right there of the cost difference is that OpenAI is just making crazy amounts of money because they're the only one with the capability. Do they need that money? Are they using it for R&D? They're losing money, obviously, as a company because they spend so much on training, right? So the okay. inference itself is a very high margin, but it doesn't recoup the cost of everything else they're doing. Okay. Um, so yes, they need that money because the revenue and margins pay for continuing to build the next thing, right? So, Alongside raising more money. So the suggestion is that DeepSeek is like really bleeding out money. Well, so so here's one thing, right? There, uh, uh, we'll get to this in a second, but like... DeepSeek doesn't have any capacity to actually serve the model. They stopped signups. Uh, the ability to use it is like non-existent now, right? For most people, because so many people are trying to use it, they just don't have the GPUs to serve it, mm-hmm. right? Um, OpenAI has hundreds of thousands of GPUs between them and Microsoft to serve their models. DeepSeek has has a factor of much lower, right? You know, even if you believe our research, which is 50,000 GPUs, uh, and a portion of those are for research, portion of those are for the hedge fund, right? They still have nowhere close to the GPU volumes and capacity to serve the model right, at scale. Um, 
So it is cheaper. Uh, a part of that is OpenAI making a ton of money. Is DeepSeek making money on their mar API? N unknown. I don't actually think so. Um, and part of that is this chart, right? Look at all the other providers, right? Together AI, Fireworks AI are very high-end companies, right? X Meta, Together AI is TreeDAO and the inventor of like flash attention, right? Which is a huge efficiency technique, right? They're very efficient, good companies. And they're serve and, and I do know those companies make money, right? Not not tons of money on inference, but they make money. And so they're serving at like a five to seven X difference in cost, mm -hmm. right? And so, you know, now when you when you equate, okay, OpenAI is making tons of money, that's like a 5x difference. Um, and the companies that are trying to make money for this model is like a 5x difference. There is still a gap, right? There's still a gap. And that is just DeepSeek being really freaking good, right? The model architecture, MLA, the way they did the MOE, all these things. There is like legitimate just efficiency difference. Like all their, all their low-level libraries that we talked about in training, some of them probably translate to inference and those weren't yeah. released. So we may go a bit into conspiracy land, but is it possible the Chinese government is subsidizing DeepSeek? I actually don't think they are. I think when you look at the Chinese labs, there's uh, there's Huawei has a lab, Moonshot AI. Uh, there's a couple other labs out there that are really close with the government. And then there's labs like Alibaba and DeepSeek, which are not close with the government. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, we talked about this, this, uh, the CEO, the, this, this like reverent figure who's like quite different, who has like, sounds this, like, awesome, <laughs> very different, like viewpoints based on the Chinese interviews that are translated than what the CCP might necessarily want. Now, now to be clear, right. Does he have a loss leader because he can fund it through his hedge fund? Yeah, sure. So the hedge fund might be subsidizing it. Yes. I mean, they absolutely did. Right. Because deep has not raised much money. They're now trying to raise a round, uh, in China, uh, but they have not raised money historically. It's all just been funded by the hedge fund. And he owns like over half the company, like 50, 60% of the company is owned by him. Some of the interviews, there's a discussion on how like doing this is a recruiting tool. You see this at the American companies too. It's like having GPUs, recruiting tool, being at the cutting edge of AI, recruiting tool. Open sourcing. Open sourcing, Meta recruiting tool. So much talent. They were so far behind and they got so much talent yeah. because they just open source stuff. Yeah. Uh, more conspiracy thoughts. Is it possible since they're a hedge fund that they timed everything with this release and the pricing uh, and they have sh they shorted in Nvidia stock and stock of US AI companies and released it with Stargate, like just perfect timing to be able did, to make uh, money. <laughs> I, like they've released it on inauguration day. They know the international, what is on the international calendar. But I mean, I don't expect them to. If you listen to I, their motivations for AI, it's like. No, they, if they, you they released They released V3 on like December 26th. Like who yeah. releases the day yeah. after Christmas? No one looks, right? Uh, they had released the papers before this, right? The V3 paper and the R1 paper. So people had been looking at it and been like, wow. Um, and then they just released the the R1 model. I think they're just shipping as fast as they can. And like, who cares about Christmas? We who should... cares about, you know, get it out before Chinese New Year, right? Obviously, yeah. which just happened. Um, I don't think they actually were like timing the market or trying to make the biggest splash possible. I think they're just like shipping. I think that's one of their big advantages. I We know that a lot of the American companies are very invested in safety. And that is the central culture of a place like Anthropic. And I think Anthropic sounds like a wonderful place to work. But if safety is your number one goal, it takes way longer to get artifacts out. That's why Anthropic is not open sourcing things. That's their claims. But there's reviews internally. Anthropic um, raises, it mentions things to international governments. There's been news of how Anthropic has done pre-release testing with the UK AI Safety Institute. All of these things add inertia to the process of getting things out. And we're on this trend line where the progress is very high. So if you reduce the time from when your model is done training, you run a vals that's good, you want to get it out as soon as possible to maximize the perceived quality of your outputs. Mm -hmm. DeepSeq and, and does Dar this so well. Dario explicitly said Claude 3.5 Sonnet was trained like nine months or a nine year to ago. ten months ago. Nine to ten months ago, and I think it took them another like handful of months to release it. Right, so it's like there is there is a significant gap here, right? And especially with reasoning models, uh, the word in the San Francisco street is that like Anthropic has a better model than O3, right? And they won't release it. Why? Because Chains of thought are scary, right? They're, and they are legitimately scary, right? If you look at R1, it flips back and forth between Chinese and English. Sometimes it's gibberish. And then the right answer comes out, right? And like for you and I, it's like, great. <laughs> great. I mean, like, like people are infatuated with you. You're like, you're telling me this is a high value thing and it works and it's doing this? It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, I mean you, you, you talked about that uh, sort of like uh, chain of thought for that philosophical thing, yeah. which is not something they trained to, it to be philosophically good. It's just sort of an artifact of the chain of thought training it did. Um, but like, that's super important in that, like, can I inspect your mind and what you're thinking right now? No, 
Um, and so I don't know if you're lying to my face. Uh, and chain of thought models are that way, right? Like this is this is a true quote unquote risk between, you know, a chat application where, hey, I asked the model to say, you know, bad words or whatever, or or how to how to make anthrax. And it tells me that's unsafe, sure, but that's something I can get out relatively easily. What if I tell the AI to do a task and then it does the task all of a sudden randomly in a way that I don't want it, right? And now that has like much more task versus like response is very different, right? So the bar for safety is much higher. At least this is Anthropic's case, right? Like for DeepSeek, they're like, ship, right? Yeah. 